Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and today we're going to be talking about a pretty interesting mission coming out of NASA where they're actually planning to collide a relatively large spacecraft with an asteroid in order to see if we can maybe one day use this technique to redirect asteroids. Anyway, let's talk about this and welcome to What The Math. So what you see on the screen is that particular asteroid that uh, NASA is planning to visit. And by visit, I mean smack into it. This is the asteroid known as Didymus. Um, and it actually, right here, has a partner known uh, somewhat cutely as Didymoon. So you have Didymus and you have Didymoon. The larger asteroid um, is uh, approximately, what's this size here? 680 meters in diameter and the smaller rock here is about 140 meters in diameter and um, essentially this is a binary asteroid system that uh, NASA is planning to use as a kind of a test ground for a very very useful and very practical mission. Um, this is probably one of the most practical scientific and space missions that we're going to have in the next decade or so because they're essentially trying to create a technique for planetary protection. They are going to um, create a database with well essentially new uh, techniques, new formulas, new mathematical calculations for how much mass you might need to redirect an asteroid that could potentially collide with planet Earth. So in other words, um, they're planning to launch um, a mission that's going to have several parts, including uh, a mission that will simply observe everything and a mission that will come back here later that is going to um, collect some other data. And all of this will be done in order for us to actually find ways to uh, change the orbits of asteroids in case they decide to collide with our planet one day. Now, uh, from all of the asteroids we have right now, of the all potentially hazardous asteroids that you see on the screen here, um, basically none of them will be colliding or even coming close to our planet for the next five to six hundred years. So in other words, we're pretty safe. But we are constantly discovering new asteroids and also new comets that uh, do sometimes make it pretty close to our planet. And if we actually, um, by chance, find one that has a chance of colliding with our planet, we need to actually, um, way in advance, prepare ourselves. And this is what this mission is for. Uh, it's actually called DART. And DART stands for Double Asteroid Redirection Test, because there are two asteroids, and because it's essentially a, a test of redirection. We want to see um, by how much can we actually redirect an asteroid if we collide it with a spacecraft at a relatively high velocity. Now, obviously, we can't really collide it with a larger piece because we don't have a means to deliver anything uh, massive here. But we can create a spacecraft that's about a um, thousand kilograms um, or basically one ton in mass. And then we can then um, launch it pretty quickly. It can move as fast as one kilometer per second or even faster and smack right onto the surface of the asteroid. Let's see if I can hit it. And I missed it by just a bit. So that's kind of not what I expected to do, but basically, there you go. You could actually collide with this. And so uh, the mission will have several steps. One of those steps is actually the actual collision, but um, the Italian scientists are also planning to launch an observation mission at the same time that will um, orbit the asteroid and observe the actual collision in progress. One thing I forgot to mention is when will this actually happen? So the plan for now is 2022, so not anytime soon, but um, it will most likely occur because uh, a lot of people are really interested in this mission. And uh, apart from the Italian mission and apart from the actual mission from NASA, there's also going to be a follow-up study, um, most likely by European Space Agency uh, in 2026, where they'll most likely launch another craft with highly advanced optics that will then use its cameras to essentially look at the asteroid and to uh, try to estimate the uh, impact force and to study the craters and then to also obviously study the changes in the orbital parameters. Now all of this sounds really interesting but um, I figured well we might as well just try it by ourselves using Universe Sandbox and see what we can actually do uh, with some of these rocks. So in other words, what we can actually do is we can create a new simulation here. And let's just actually do a solar system simulation. And 
in this particular simulation, I only have one goal. My goal is to see if I can redirect um, a rock similar to Didi Moon, um, which is about, what, 140 meters in diameter, by smacking something um, size of a typical probe. And so I'm going to actually create a manual object here. Uh, it's going to be with a very specific orbit where it does intersect Earth's orbit at some point and then goes back to the actual asteroid belt. So let's see if I was able to achieve this. Um, we need to take a look at its orbit and there it is. And I think, yeah, right there it actually crosses Earth's orbit. And here it goes back to, well, actually it's kind of where Mars is. But that's good enough. You know what? That's good enough. Uh, normally, an asteroid would be coming from farther away, or maybe even uh, if it's a comet, might even come from farther than Saturn. In this case, this is more of a close by asteroid. So we can work with this. And so what we have here is a, a rock that's approximately 80 meters in radius. And that's about, uh, what is that in feet? Uh, about 240 feet in radius. Uh, so it's not really that big, but it is pretty massive. Um, and so if this were to collide with our planet, it could actually potentially cause a serious disaster if it was in the middle of a city or something. Um, but it wouldn't really destroy that much. If it hit the water, it might create a tsunami or it might uh, explode in the atmosphere. Uh, let me just compare it with something that we might know. Let's compare it to a car, Tesla specifically. So if I were to place a Tesla around it, that's kind of what a car looks like. So it's a pretty big object. And so what we're going to do is let's actually take a car, which because it's, it's approximately the weight that we need. It's about 1,300 kilograms. And we're going to collide this with a, the asteroid and see if its orbital parameters actually change. Now, um, this is, I think, a pretty um, sort of accurate representation of what we're going to be dealing with with DART mission. Obviously not as scientifically accurate, but um, this is probably the best we can do in a simple uh, simulation. And I think it's a pretty good example uh, to kind of try to see if it even works at all. And so here I'm going to zoom into this object and um, I want to launch um, this car going basically straight at it in order to decrease uh, its velocity and basically drop um, its uh, periapsis or its closest approach by a few kilometers. So what we're looking at here, we're going to be looking at two things. Well, actually, maybe just one thing. Most importantly, we're going to be looking at this periapsis distance that's right here. But we also want to see if this changes as well. This is the um, closest approach to the sun. This is the farthest approach from the sun. If we uh, are trying to redirect an asteroid, we probably want to collide something with it a few orbits before the actual collision occurs. And we want to change this by at least a few kilometers. Um, if we can change this by, let's say, 10 kilometers, it's very unlikely that this mission will be a success. We'll need to collide it with something much bigger. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, first of all, slow down the simulation a little bit, take the Tesla Roadster, and we're going to be launching it at a speed of about, um, let's start with one kilometer per second, because I think that's a little bit more realistic. Although that speed obviously can be increased by essentially just using more boosters and uh, blasting the actual spacecraft. Um, but one kilometer per second is probably something that we can definitely achieve. And I'm going to launch it right at this location here. And let's just actually watch it as well, because because I think it would actually make for a pretty interesting simulation. But what I'm really looking at is something that you don't really see right now because it's behind my face. We're looking at this number right here. So this periapsis distance is what I'm super interested in, in seeing if it changes at all. So I'm going to actually let go of the pause button. And okay, here we go. Okay, it looks like it changed by about 14 kilometers maybe. It um, seems to have definitely changed though. I want to try this again. So right now it says that it's 821 kilometers. So actually it's 144,549,821 kilometers. Let's try this again one more time. It's at 807 kilometers. So, okay, so colliding this relatively large object at one kilometer per second did uh, drop the periapsis by approximately 15 kilometers. Uh, 
And that's actually quite significant because it means that um, if we do this far enough from where the actual um, object is, if we do this, let's say 12 or 14 or 15 years before the potential collision, we can actually redirect it by a significant amount. And if we do this at just the right spot, at just the right angle and with just the right speed, we can definitely redirect an asteroid without really um, sending any nukes or anything like that. So this collision mission is very, very crucial. It's very important. It's one of the most practical space missions um, of the next decade. It definitely creates this new, really important tool for us to protect our planet, to protect people on the planet from one thing that um, we don't actually have any protection right now. Uh, as a matter of fact, the famous movie Armageddon that has uh, a team of astronauts that use a nuke to try to explode an asteroid, which unfortunately I can't show you because I'm sure they'll probably uh, copyright strike me. In that movie, um, the actual scenario is completely unrealistic. You may actually have heard scientists explain why it would actually create more problems by exploding a nuke uh, on an asteroid that's about to hit Earth because you now not only have an asteroid that's about to collide with the planet, you have an asteroid that was nuked full of radiation that's about to actually spread across a much wider area and deliver all of this energy uh, in the atmosphere and literally boil the atmosphere. It's, it's just, it's a completely disastrous scenario. So this, however, the redirect mission might be the solution. And so I'm super curious now as to whether they'll be able to actually complete the mission by 2022. Hopefully they do uh, complete this. And most importantly, I'm actually kind of curious by how much they'll be able to redirect the moon. Now, obviously, if I collide this car at a higher velocity, uh, let's say three kilometers per second, the uh, actual change in orbit will be much more dram dramatic. Uh, so the speed here does play a huge role. So right now it actually changed by something like 50 kilometers. And if I take a bigger object, uh, let's say we use this um, third stage of Saturn rocket, and basically that's about 10 times as heavy, um, launch that, in this case, uh, the actual periapsis and the actual orbit has changed by, oh boy, quite a lot actually. I think it's about several hundred kilometers. And so, in uh, yeah, you can see that even the orbit of the car changed. So you can see that um, the collision itself does have a dramatic effect. Um, however, obviously, this is where we need to do calculations. We need to actually collect data. We need to do the experiments to see how much of an influence it has on an actual asteroid. And that's why I honestly think that this is probably the most useful and the most practical mission coming out of NASA, um, except of course for the telescopes, in the next few years. Uh, and this is something I'll be following pretty closely because we need to have this data. This is really, really important for the future of humanity. Uh, the chance for a collision with a rock for the next few hundred years um, is not really that high, but if we discover a new object that we still haven't found that has a slight chance of a collision, we might be able to redirect it. So on that note, um, thank you for watching. Hopefully now you know a little bit more about this mission. And most importantly, you understand how you can actually completely redirect an object by colliding something really small, moving relatively fast, um, as long as you do it way, way ahead. Uh, so here we can change the actual orbit by as little as 15 kilometers or as high as several hundred kilometers, um, as long as we do it in advance and um, with a large enough velocity. On that note, thank you for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed this video. And if you did, don't forget to subscribe, share this video with someone who enjoys learning about space and sciences through video games and simulations, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Space out. And as always, bye-bye.